Margo, you were telling us this story. You were doing the constellation work. You wanted to have this experience in your day-to-day -day life. So what, how did that come about? How did that shift happen? Yeah, well, that's the, you know, that's the <laughs> breaking down process. I, I, this that I've talked about before, and that's on my website. For four years, my whole Margot structure was this, uh, dismantled. Everything that I thought is Margot before, my attachments to, you know, to work and to money and to family and society and culture and what it means to be a woman and how to relate and all of it, it was, it really felt like it was ripped out of me, it was pulled out of me. I didn't really have to do anything, but I was emptied. I was really emptied and scrubbed clean. So it's on my website, you know, describe this process. And it was scary. It was really scary because we, the, we know how to do life according to the social standards and according to the programming that we inherited and, you know, our family, you know, we are plugged in in a particular way and when that go which is just thinking and feeling that's all there is that's, not, that's why I'm saying we are really emptiness we are not the thinking and feelings that we think we are that's really just programmed but that programming can and does release and it happened to me and it's painful when somebody says the whole waking up and clearing out process is easy and effortless they haven't had it done to them. <laughs> it's not easy. It's very, very painful. It's literally like you are dying, and you are dying. Your sense of self, the, the person that you have known yourself to be, and how to stay in life, and 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 how everything works as that goes. It literally feels like you know pieces of you are dying, and it's a physical thing. So did that. <clears throat> Um, process just initiate spontaneously, or was there some like linchpin that was pulled? And yeah, that? yeah, yeah. The, the, the linchpin was that I saw as a direct seeing. I was, I was, I was preparing for a workshop. I had, I hadn't really ever done meditation. I wasn't a spiritual seeker. I didn't even know about that we could be nothingness or about enlightenment or anything. I didn't know about any of that. But I was preparing for a workshop, ordinary business stuff I was doing, and then suddenly I had this direct scene where I saw these bodies are empty of the self that we all take ourselves to be. It's empty, there's nobody home, it's really like a puppet. <clears throat> and I also saw that, and I didn't relate it back then to my prayer, you know, that is in retrospect, I can see now, you know, maybe that's how it all connected up. But, and the other thing I saw is that as long as we work on the persona to better our lives, to have a better life, which is basically kind of the way, you know, our, our, our Western culture is, is set up, that we, we, we always try to become a better person that will not get us free. But that was my work. I had devoted, you know, 15 years of study and then professional work with two different, uh, very powerful uh, therapies, devoted to help people better their lives. But that wasn't gonna get us free. And free was always what I wanted. And I wanted to help people get free. So I didn't understand, I didn't understand the emptiness aspect of the body. And I didn't understand why and how working on personal issues didn't get us free. And, you know, then I couldn't do my work anymore. It's like, if there's nobody home, who am I working with, first of all? <laughs> yeah? And then how, if it's not helping to get anyone free, why do it? So I walked away and thought I would never do the work again. And within six months, my whole Margot structure was dismantled, really on its own. I could feel how stuff was just scrubbed away, taken away. It was, I was left more and more empty. And that was incredibly scary because I didn't know about no mind. I didn't know about emptiness. I didn't know what is taught in these uh, you know, spiritual traditions. So for me, it was very scary. 
and I also lost my foothold in the world, my stability, my financial setting, my housing, everything collapsed. That I was within with eight months, I was seven, eight months, I was homeless. I lost pretty much everything. I had some money left, and then and and then I I I, I at one point I was already on the way out of my house I had already given notice and I had no idea what was I gonna do next and I, I, I tried my hardest to keep my life going and nothing worked and then I, one day I said okay somebody or something is messing with my life <laughs> it, said, it felt like I was, I was cursed <laughs> if you do everything that you know how to do in life and it doesn't work Everything and you, th th then th there is a problem somewhere, but it's not with me because I'm trying really hard. I didn't just throw everything out the window and say I'm done with life. No, I'm trying my hardest to stay in life and stay stable and do whatever we are taught to do life, how to do life. And so one day I said, okay, somebody is messing up here big time, and I have no clue what's wanted, and I give up. I really, I was done. I wasn't, I wasn't going to move. I wasn't going to do anything anymore. I was so done. I said, okay, whoever messed up my life to <laughs> this big degree, you take care. I really just dumped the whole responsibility on whoever that was that made my life collapse. In six months, six to eight months, my whole life collapsed. That was, that's really fast. And then I had this, immediately, as I said, okay, I give up, you take care. Whoever that you was, I wasn't sure. I then had a sense, leave America. And in that moment when I said, you take care, my sense of self, the will that says, I want, I should, I just, that collapsed as well. The whole sense of Margot with the sense of, I am in charge, disappeared. From that moment, there wasn't a sense anymore, I am in charge of my life. That, whatever that was, was then in charge. And then began a learning period of how to do life, not only in the constellation field, but actually out there from not knowing. Mm -hmm. Having nothing to hold on anymore, no safety nets, no anchors, no, you know, no handle wars, nothing truly from nothing and I was so empty and I had lost the ability to kind of really relate much anymore because you know the thinking and the and the and the perception when that all is gone you're really empty you're like an empty vessel so from there then I learned how to do life from not knowing and it was a process I basically learned how to do life from not knowing how I was doing it in constellation work, moment to moment to be in tune with what's needed next, I learned out in, in regular life. And that was a four year process. And after approximately four years, I had then the direct seeing that this nothingness that was already guiding me in life and was guiding me in constellation work, is the only thing in existence that nothingness. It was a very visceral and clear knowing. We all are that same nothingness, and we just up that nothingness operates through these bodies, however these bodies are programmed. <coughs> but who and what we all are is that same nothingness that's always there and always guides us and is actually in charge. Who we think is in charge is not who is really in charge. And had to really learn that in, in in a practical way of doing life. And I was, you know, I was sent, I was moved to countries where I didn't speak the language. I was moved to Central America and Mexico. Didn't know anybody there. My my money, the, the money that I had from selling my car and my home my home stuff and all of my healing and material. <laughs> Eventually ran out after a year and a half, and then I really had to do life with completely nothing. And it, yeah, so that's why I'm saying to learn how to do life from nothing, to really embody the enlightened awareness that we are nothing, to really embody it in daily life, 
cost you everything. Everything, because the only thing you can rely on is this nothingness. As long as you rely on anything of your thinking mind, you're still relying on the structure of society and your family system and your own self. It's a very different, very different um, actual personal experience, practical experience from what is kind of taught out in the in the in the field, the actual practical living of from nothing, with nothing, as nothing <laughs> is something else. I just think it's so beautiful that the gift that you wanted to give was freedom. And so first it was given to you because yes. you can't give what you don't have. Yes. So I just think the way that yeah. kind of synchronicity of that coming yeah. together was so mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. And I would do it all over again. It was so hard. And you know, I was looked upon by my family and other professionals and you know, the circle of where I <laughs> was part of as crazy. You know, what's wrong with her and what? She's traveling around in, in, in Mexico with nothing and she has nothing and she had so much and, yeah. And she's fine? Well, you know, yeah. Yeah, I was more than fine. Mm -hmm. It's, if I could give it to people, I would just hand it out. It's so delicious really to live from this place. But it really takes a dying. It takes a dying of the program self, and that is going to be a struggle. The program self does not want to die because it's actually the inherited program that has been moved down, like you were saying, from generation to generation to generation. <laughs> that is the, you know, it has a momentum that doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go. But what's always underneath is this nothingness, this delicious nothingness where there's always peace and there's always quiet and everything is always taken care of. And when you come to consolation work and you participate in this field, you get a taste of this. Somehow something always works out, no matter how messy it is at the beginning and in the middle. But the end is always, always treasurable. And I don't do it, and the representatives don't do it, this knowing field does it, and our lives can really be lived from that place. <laughs>